Hi gang, Scott here, continuing our journey through the On One Effects filters, and this video is for the photo filter. This filter is like your old school colored glass filters, like an 81A or an 85 warming filter, you know, things like that. But of course, in the digital world, we can choose any color we want, and that's what the photo filter does. So in this video, we'll go through the controls of the filter, the various shapes, and I'll give you a couple examples of what you can do with it, and when I use it in my photos. Really quick, if you like videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're thinking about adding on one products to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there. It'll save you a little bit of money. Give me a little bit of support. Let me come back and do more videos like this. With that, let's have a look at the photo filter. All right, let's get the photo filter added to this image here, right down here, about halfway through the effects module. And you can see immediately this added a blue colored filter to it. Let's run through the various options we have here in the filter. First up, we have lots of different styles, and many of them simulate different types of filters. Your warm cools, your 85 warming filter, and there are just a whole bunch of them. Like all of our tools, we can hover over them, and you'll see some of them have these graduated colorings like this lavender grad it's you know this lavender tint on the top but not on the bottom we'll get into the controls and the shapes on those things there are a whole bunch that are in here so you can quickly audition them check them out or you can dive into the sliders now let's talk about uh, a few things here there are a variety of different uh, filter types you know, almost like shapes that are used with the photo filter and we'll start with solid those filter types are here there's four of them We'll start with solid. You choose your color. You can either do that with the color wheel, at least on Macintosh. I uh, let the Windows users comment whether or not this feature happens in Windows. Let's um, let's just go stick with uh, something here. Actually, let's, let's choose something we can obviously see. Something like really outrageous, like red, right? You can also control this from the hue slider, right? You know, this does the same thing that I was doing with the color wheel. The amount slider is how strong that color is, and by default, it's a, it's a subtle touch, which uh, which tends to be good because it blends with your photo naturally. But we're going to push this really far so we can see that red happening there. Now these two sliders down here, saturation and polarizer. Saturation. Actually, let me back that off a little bit. Saturation is an interesting one because it's adjusting the saturation of your image, the colors in your photo not the red here. So I push saturation. And for example, look at the greens in the center boat there and the reflections on that, you know, that, that window or the blues and some of the trim. That's getting amped up. That is definitely not a red, correct? That is the saturation of the underlying photo. And polarizer, well, it simulates a polarizing filter. So, you know, we can push this farther and we'll see a little more deeper in the shadows. Uh, it, it simulates a polarizer, cuts down glare, increases a little contrast. So you can see that effect here, no polarizer, full polarizer. This will not do what a polarizing filter on your camera, on the front of your lens will do. There's only so much we can do with the optics, uh, or outside of optics in, in digital world, but it can help out. It can, it can give a little like, a little extra oomph there. And the last is mode. Now the mode has a few options here. We have strong, which is a heavier amount of that color tint, subtle, and then clean highlights or clean shadows. And clean highlights says, well, let me keep the brighter areas relatively tint free. Clean shadows is the opposite. Let me keep the deep shadows relatively tint free. And that's uh, you know, helpful depending on the look that you're going after for a photo. Now that's all just one filter type, the solid type. As we get into these others, we have graduated, bicolor, and center, we get additional controls. Let me start with graduated. Graduated adds this position here, this distance, rotation, transition, a few other presets. To see what's going on here, I'll push that amount all the way up, and I'll take transition all the way down. So we have this clean line. Now you can see what's going on here, right? I have a split on my filter. You know, the graduated filters, we have that uh, glass, so it, would, it would fade to another color. And so we have controlling for distance. We can push this up and down. We can rotate things. Be honest, I don't use 
this filter type. And the reason for that is I have masking tools that can give me the same amount of control, if not more. Right? Instead of using a graduated filter type here, I just use solid and I'd reach for my masking bug. I have gradients and I can do all of that with my masking tools. And for me, it's much easier to work on the screen with the masking tool as opposed to working with these sliders to try to control the position exactly where I want it. Yeah, I can do it, but I'll use the masking tools directly. And while I'm in this, uh, this talking about masking tools, the same thing holds true for the center shape, right? The center is just a circular version of the graduated, right? So we have that same thing we can transition they give you the mode edges versus center so you can toggle it back and forth. Well, doesn't that look just like, back to solid, center and edges here, right? I can do center, drop that there. Maybe I meant to have that as be edges and I have more control. I can create an elliptical shape. I can more easily rotate it. It's just simpler, in my opinion, to work with the masking tool. So for the photo filter, solid is useful. Graduated and the you know, circular one, the center one, not so much. What is useful is by color. Let's go ahead and reset all of that, delete that mask. Let's go back to by color. Now by color, we have a two-toned filter here, right? Two different colors. And let's set these to opposite sides of the color wheel so it's very obvious to see them. We have a second control for color, you know, color one, color two, push the amount all the way up. You can see on the bottom half, I've got this cyan. On the top half, I've got this red. And I still have my saturation and polarizing controls, still have my mode mean controls. I can now set the position. And this one, you, you, you have to work with the sliders. You have distance, which really just kind of pushes the change, like the point of transition, to one side or another in your photo. If I rotate, I can have it push to the right or push to the left. The transition will make a nicer fade if you want something like that. Uh, you have some built-ins so you can quickly choose something. The, the, the key thing here is that you've got a two-toned color. So if you wanted to do some kind of two-toned tint where, I don't know, the sky was a lavender color, but the foreground was more of a, I don't know, a sandy orange, something like that. I'm throwing these, these ideas out here. You have options to do multiple colors within a single photo filter and fade between them. I guess the last little control to cover here is this swap colors button. We can swap them back and forth. So those are all the controls for the photo filter. Why don't we take them and apply uh, an example to this photo of the boats here so you can get a feel for, well, what are the types of looks you can actually create with this? All right, so let's reset this filter and start from the top here. So uh, the default is this solid blue color. And actually that looks kind of good for this scene and before and after, kind of giving it a bit of an aged, uh, faded kind of look here. It's a little strong, uh, so let's get in here and do some uh, do some controlling here. Uh, the first thing I'll do is, is take the opacity back. You know, maybe um, I'll start with 65. We'll see how that looks there. Just to, to, to soften that, uh, that coloration there. And now let's play with the amount. So the amount is moderate to begin with. And usually what I'll do is I'll push it until I feel like it's a little bit too far and then back it off some. That's good. I don't prefer what it's doing to the highlights, so the whiter parts of the boat. I want those to stay kind of bright. So I'm going to jump around a little bit, and this is often how I'll work with the filters. It's I'm making one adjustment. I see something I don't like, like you know the, the, the Caledonian boat here. I'd like that to be brighter. Well, how about instead, let me try clean highlights. See, I like that much better. Just that one change, right? Clean shadows, clean highlights. I like that much better for this type of look here. Uh, okay, cool. Now, the next thing that's jumping out at me is I'm adding this blue here, and so I'm getting like double down on some of these blues that are you know, peppered throughout the scene. Let me take the saturation and pull that back, and I expect to see some of those, those really, really bright blues back off. 
And again, I'll, I'll pull it down too far. You know, it's like, all right, I've gone a little bit, a little bit overboard. And I'll back things out a little bit, uh, returning some of that color. Uh, what is polarizer going to do for us? Let me push that around. Ooh, that's interesting. That actually gives it a very, almost like a bleach bypass kind of feel. A little bit washed out, maybe right around there. Okay, so all that added up before and after, that's pretty good. Uh, there's one tweak I'd like to make, and I, I want a little bit less of that blue tone in the shadow areas. And a way that we can control that is with the blending options. Every one of the filters in effects has blending options. These are up in the gears. And there are these protection sliders, right? Highlight shadow skin. I'm going to push the shadow slider up. So I'll push it far. And we'll see things like down underneath the dock is a little less blue. Uh, ocean steel, that boat is taking back more of its green, right? Before that change, after. And we'll just wiggle this around and dial it in until it feels pretty good. Maybe there or so. Okay, um, I guess while I'm in the blending options, there are some of these other things, the, uh, the mode and apply to. For the photo filter, the, uh, the blending modes like light and darken, those get kind of wild kind of quickly. So um, this is not necessarily the, the best filter to anticipate what's going to happen with these blending modes. So you can try them out and audition them, but more often than not, I'm just leaving it at normal and I'm using everything else to shape and refine the look of the filter. Uh, similar to apply to, where we can apply to just the highlights or just the shadows or so forth with a coloration that tends to get a little awkward, like this only applying to the shadows. This feels just weird, right? You know, the there's a blue shadow in the hills in the background, but the land around it doesn't look like it. It's it's um it's almost like a little bit of cross processy type of thing. Of course, you can explore. I, I tend not to use these pieces here. But let me do this uh, summed up here. So before those changes, after, and I like this. I like this like a very like you know kind of a aged faded blue kind of look. Let me show you one other example of the photo filter in action. This one for uh, sunrise or sunset scenes. This is, a, this is a nice touch to your photos. At this photo here, you know, classic sunset kind of look thing. What can we do with the photo filter? We can add a little uh, kiss of color to the sky, right? So let's add a photo filter here. And I like to use either 85 or the orange style. Just touch that on there. And then open up your masking area, hit the lumen button. Now what lumen does is it targets the color that you've chosen to the brighter parts of the photo. So before and after. It's just a nice, subtle, inviting add of warmth. Of course, you can push that strength if you wanted to, right? I don't want to go too nuclear, but it, the defaults tend to be quite good with just that luminosity mask. And there's one other variant on you you can do this. Like if you want to tint the shadows a different color for sunset scenes like this, I like the lavender one. And there is a style for that. Let me turn off this one here. We'll we'll call that uh, we'll call that the orange highlights. Okay. And let's add a second photo filter so we can do a little experimentation. In the styles, there is lavender grad. I, I mentioned earlier I don't really like the graduated ones here. I'll use masking tools instead. So I'll just switch that over to solid. Once again, open up this luminosity mask to hit the shadows, invert it. And that's looking really cool, right? And we can pump up or play down the amount of that lavender tint. But the luminosity mask is making a very natural, nuanced blend right before that change and after. So that one's the lavender. I could spell it, shadows. And I wonder what the two look like together. I'm not sure if this is going to mix well. Oh, actually, not too bad. Actually, it actually looks pretty good. I can actually do both of those. So that's a little kiss to the sky you can do with the photo filters or to the shadows, just using the luminosity mask to your advantage to add that tinting in there. And that's going to wrap it up for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Got some uh, ideas about how you might use the photo filter with your photos. Got any questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.